guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about staff sergeant results. I can't believe I'm actually making this video right now. I'm gonna start off this video by sharing with you guys that I made it! First of all, I just wanna say congratulations to everybody else who also made staff sergeant. You guys should be very proud of yourselves and it's just an awesome moment. So. I hope you celebrate. I hope that you just take it all in. Just making it to E5, this is the first rank that you actually have to take a test and earn. E1, E2, E3, E4, those are things that a lot of people just get if they stay out of trouble and they stay in long enough. So yeah, we earned this, you guys. If you guys have been following me for a little while, then you know that I tested for Staff Sergeant in May and the results just came out. There has not been a public release yet. So you guys are probably watching this later in the week. We were asked not to post anything just yet, but yeah, I'm really excited to share this with you guys. I just wanted to kind of tell a story about before I enlisted and how this all came to be, especially in less than three years. I just kind of wanted to take a trip down memory lane as this comes full circle for me. So my OG followers know that I enlisted Later in life, much later than a lot of people do, it's not, you know, rare for people to join the military a little bit older, especially in the Air Force, but it's also not the most common thing to do. So as many of you know, I wanted to enlist when I was about 17 and fresh out of high school, I took the ASVAB, I was about to go to MEPS, I had made a job list with my recruiter and everything. The Air Force is just something that I wanted to do for a very long time and I made other choices that were not super smart, but you know, I made mistakes. I definitely learned from them. A few years later, when I was done making those mistakes, I really wanted to get my life back on track. And I came up with all these goals for myself. I really wanted to go back to school. I really wanted to get a degree. I knew that I wanted to be a teacher. And I was also usually working either two part-time jobs in retail or one full-time job. So that's when my life started to get back on track. So I earned my associate's degree. I then went to a four-year university in Florida and I finished up and got my bachelor's degree. And at this point, I had also been promoted a couple times in my retail job and I was doing really well there. And so I was really busy and I was, you know, trying to play catch up for years, for so many years, I tried to catch up. And I just felt like I needed to prove myself not really to other people, but to myself. I felt like even after my success with retail and my success with getting my bachelor's degree, I still felt like something was missing. And I was like, you know what? I still have unfinished business with the military. So I really want to do this before it's too late. Um, at the point that I was thinking about joining again, I was single no kids, you know, I had like nothing tying me down to a certain location. There was no one that I really needed to discuss the decision with besides myself. I was an adult living on my own, you know, with a salary income and a degree and I was like, if I want to make this change right now, I can. And that might change very soon in the near future since, you know, I am 26, 27 years old at this point. So I went and talked to a recruiter and you guys know if you've watched my earlier videos that it took me a little while to find a recruiter who I felt like really cared about me and really had my best interest in mind. But once I did, she was the best recruiter. And I expressed to her that my age was a factor that was concerning me. And she assured me that if anything, my life experience and my educational experience would probably only help me on this journey, especially in the career field that I was going into. So she explained to me that there are people who join later in life. I would not be the only one. I'd be going in as an E3, so I wouldn't be starting totally from scratch because of my degree. And she also said, you know what? I believe that in two or three years, you can make staff sergeant. And there are plenty of staff sergeants who are 30 years old. At that point, you will be caught up and when she said that to me, I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. I have been playing catch up for years. Let's just do it again, right? Let's just keep going, why, why stop here? So that became a goal that I really wanted to accomplish and when I joined as an E3, I really wanted to 
not just rank up as quick as I could because it's not just about rank and with more rank comes more responsibility. I'm not naive to that. I've, I've been in a role as a supervisor and a manager and a teacher so that's my thing. That's what I enjoy. That's why I went to school for it and that's why I did it so long in retail but I really just wanted to catch up. I wanted to be at a level where the other people in my role were maybe similar age or similar experience or similar education and so yeah I made that a personal goal of mine and my recruiter believed in me and I believed in myself and that has been a goal of mine since I shipped out I mean really since I enlisted which was like August or September of 2018 and then I shipped out December 2018 so when my recruiter told me that I could make staff sergeant or E5 in just three years or less I was like, how? How is it even possible? She kind of explained the possibilities or the steps to me and she was like, you're going in as an E3, you know, you can go for senior airmen below the zone and try to get senior airmen six months early and then that could push you into an earlier testing cycle for staff sergeant and if you make it, then you're selected for E5 in less than three years. <sighs> I'm not gonna get emotional, but um, that's what I did and I made BTZ, it pushed me into an earlier testing cycle. So if you guys want to go back and watch the video where I talk about how I studied, what I used to study, like what books or apps or anything like that, I guess that it worked. So I would definitely recommend checking out that video. I will also link it in the description box. So I did end up getting a 3 out of 5 on my first EPR, which is basically your performance evaluation from your supervisor. And so when you get a 3 out of 5, it's just kind of saying, yes, we're giving you permission to test for the next rank, but you may not necessarily be 100% ready for it yet. So I didn't get a promote now, I didn't get a must promote. That kind of put more pressure on me to do even better on the test, and I really did work very hard. I really did study for that test, and I was like, you know what, I have always been a decent test taker. So maybe I still have a chance, but then when the promotion results came out and the statistics came out and everybody was talking about how it was a 35.06% selection rate, I was like, okay, so probably only fours and fives made it. I was like, if I didn't make it, it's okay. I tried my best. I studied hard and, you know, there's nothing else I could have done. So over 44,000 people tested for staff and only 15,000 of us made it. So if you are in that number with me, again, congrats, because chances were we didn't make it, and we did, so. So I guess moral of the story is, if there is something that you really want, something that you really wanna do, something that you really want to accomplish, there are always going to be people who tell you you can't, or tell you that you shouldn't, or tell you that you're not ready. It's not up to them. They have no idea what you're capable of, only you know what you're capable of. If there's something that you believe that you deserve and that you believe that you can accomplish and you want to reach a goal, please don't listen to other people. Please just go for it. If you watched my last video, I still don't know if I'm staying active duty. Bradley and I have a lot to figure out with the baby coming soon, but if I do stay active, or even if I move to guard or reserves, I'm obviously going to do the best I can at being a supervisor, at being a staff sergeant. I know there's a lot that comes with it. It's different. It's, you know, you're an NCO, you're a non-commissioned officer, you're not just part of the E4 mafia anymore. So I've seen good supervisors, I've seen not so good supervisors, and that's both in the civilian world and in the military world. So also Bradley is TDY right now, so I didn't get to come home and share the news with him in person, but I'm sure we will celebrate when he gets back. And my mom is flying in tonight, so we will also celebrate this week. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Brittany Lynn Lewis. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.